what we know is that the people that have basically seen some of these disruptions and, and said, oh, I, you know, I can't get to it now, or it's, you know, it's, you know, really not sure or, or that sort of thing, or treat them in a very traditional way, have been those that have very rapidly lost market share. And that's been one of the big wake up calls. So for me, the, the headline is, you know, what are you doing formally to understand the world around you as a, as a core part of the way in which you see yourself as a manager and a leader? What I want to uh, sincerely want to understand is uh, in your reports, almost 50 to 75% of executives mentioned that they actively thinking about ecosystems. Do you see that this is like already like a wave of activities happening? I think, I think there's two things happening. I think one is there's, a, there's increasing recognition across executives that this sort of external orientation, these linkages to these sort of partners is something that they should be doing. So I think that 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 conversation, that thinking has largely there. The degree to which that's translating itself into large changes in the way in which people are actually operating, there's still a lot more, do, more to do in that sort of space. And what I would describe as happening is, is in some cases, is what I would describe as, as fence peering. So you've got big players who are very interested in like, what are other, you know, what are other players doing in this area? You know, where might we be able to operate and so on and so forth? which is the reason why there's so much interest from the WEF side around this, around this research as a, as a mechanism to start to understand where those linkages might be. And this is, a, this is both big players with small players. This is big players with each other. This is consumer with retail. You know, this is potential linkages with other industry boundaries and so on. So there's, there's lots of sort of what I would describe as exploratory conversations going on in this whole, in this whole area. You mentioned uh, that it is challenging, uh, and we see also that it's challenging for companies to shift into this open, more collaborative mentality. How, what are the best examples uh, how companies can actually speed up this transition? So I think there's a few things here. One is what we're typically saying is when companies express an interest in doing it, the first thing we start to say is, uh, the first question is, what's the, what are the big rock problems you're looking to solve? So, you know, back to my early my comments at the start about this has to be something which has a very high level of uh, gain to, over, to overcome some of that initial alert. And what are those big rock problems? And what we typically suggest is things that are very directly linked to customers or consumers. Um, so if I think about this in the context of, um, of a consumer goods company, this could be something like um, a simple que- a question as simple as, how do we identify stores that may be opening over the next two, three, four, five months that we should have our products into? So if you've got someone who's setting up a new store, how do we get there quickly? How do we then get our footprint into that place in the right way so that they, they assume that ours is going to be a critical part of the assortment that they, that they carry and that we have the appropriate level of, the appropriate level of positioning, right? And so in those sorts of questions, they're then saying, okay, um, you know, we could we could just wait for people to approach us, or we or, or or what is it that we could actually do to think about a range of potential relationships that may allow us to get advanced warning when therefore we would get preferential treatment where they would list our product ahead of one of our competitors, for example. Um, and so the, the sort of thing that's emerging is people saying, okay, well, hold on a second, if we were to do that. Who would be the network of relationships that might be actually useful to be able to work in that to be able to work in that way? So there's sort of specific sort of simple examples like that. So that would be the sort of the first example, first thing. Second one then is when people are then saying, actually, we recognise that this is something that we um, will potentially need to do across our in, off of a broader part of our value chain, particularly if we get into. Um, uh, if, particularly if we get into the creation of new business models. So this, the way that, the, as again, to, as, as a, sim- a simple example, I'll give you, give you a couple. One is there's a company that we've worked with called Peerspace. And what Peerspace do is they, um, they, they let out, they look at non-traditional meeting space. Um, and so this is things like uh, identifying space in art galleries, in football stadiums, uh, etc. They've taken some of the very large uh, old format uh, Walmart stores and looked at what they could do with them, etc. And so what, and what Peerspace have done is when they look at a potential new business opportunity, rather than trying to take people from within their core Peerspace team to sort of look at that opportunity, what they say is, 
let's think about the network of players who might be optimally suited to explore it. Let's assemble them, have them work on that idea. If it works, then we'll scale it. And if it doesn't work, then we'll close it down. But they're using an ecosystem model to very directly drive their own, the, the, the growth of something very rapidly with the best expertise, right? And, and then you get other examples similar to that where companies are saying, we want to get into a new business model space. So tell us who all the potential partners are that we could work with through every step in the value chain. And then we'll look at where we would decide we need to participate in that process, right? So they could say, you know, a company might say in the call, oh, we're going to definitely own the marketing piece, but we're not going to own R&D or, or distribution um, or, you know, or the sales side, et cetera. And so they, they're making those sorts of choices by understanding what are the potential relationships that you could build in that way and then they are saying, OK, let's actually make sure that those relationships we have with all those players that we set up in the value chain are very driven about, um, are very driven to that idea of that mutual benefit. Right. So it's getting them engaged heavily into the into the uh, into the thought process. Where would you recommend our, uh, our viewers to, to educate themselves in terms of like ecosystems? Beyond uh, reading your reports and following you and etc. Yeah, there's a. Uh, the, what I'll do is there's a, there are a number of things that I think people might find interesting to uh, to read. So what I'll do is I'll get um, that forwarded to you, and you can list that out as a as a as a link to this uh, to this site. Yeah. The thing I would say though is this whole area is moving very quickly, and so the best examples actually are ones where you start to look at some of the companies that are emerging that you haven't necessarily heard of in the past because they're almost all using these sorts of these sorts of these sorts of relationships. So I would strongly suggest moving away from the kind of the Apple and and uh, and the Amazon type type conversations to thinking much more about some of these more emergent players. So I mean I think that the piece that we wrote in HBR last year would be useful, and I'll get that listed for you. But there's a, there are a range of of of, uh, of pieces in this area, and the academic research is is uh, is quite interesting. But it, as I said, this field is moving very very rapidly. So a number of the things that you you may read may still confuse the convers the, the link between platform and ecosystem and the depth of things that are evolving. Um, as I said, this seems like it's going to be one of those things which will become amongst the biggest strategic differentiators of players in our, in, in, across a whole range of industries for the next five to 10 years. This is a big theme. And I, I think in general in academia um, and in business as a whole, people are slowly waking up to that. But it's this, this curve's happened really, really quite quickly. If, if, I'm, a, if I'm an executive and I'm like super keen to at least educate myself and maybe try it. Uh, so I, I, I will follow you as a, as a, as a thought leader in this, but, but, but then like, who, who are the other people you are following, for example? In this area, well, I think what we've been, what I've been doing mostly is, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on commercial. So what we're looking at really is, is not so much what a lot of the academic theory in this area is, but actually really directly observing companies that we see as rapidly expanding in this sort of space. So it's, it is it is it uh, is it is organizations that are doing this in a whole range of in a whole range of ways across these different things, whether that's in R&D, whether that's in data sharing, um, whether that's in, in the creation of new business models, whether that's capability building, et cetera. So what we're doing is very much an exercise to understand what are the different types of uh, of the different types of problems that capability uh, that ecosystems are solving and then understanding what some of those leading practices are and then engaging with those with those with those uh, with those folks and there are these patterns of ecosystem of these different types of ecosystems that are emerging but i would you know i would i'd say that as i said this is an area where it's really moving really quite quickly. And so I would just urge people to, 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 to really, as they're looking at companies that they are, um, that they've, they're particularly enamored with, to say, to what degree can they see these sorts of trends, these sorts of ideas emerging? Because as I said, almost all the ones that we've seen that are achieving the highest level of growth have got this in their model somewhere, but they may not be necessarily talking about it as formally. But when we start saying to them, you know, what is your ecosystem? This is what we mean by ecosystems. It very rapidly comes, okay, got it. Okay, this is what we're talking about and so on. So it's where we're seeing, I think in some ways, the practical application of it is gone ahead of where a lot of the writing is. Oliver, uh, can you share a little bit more about your work which you're doing with uh, World Economic Forum and uh, specifically ecosystems? 
Yeah, sure. So um, we, um, as most of your, a lot of your folks will know, the, the, the forum is a convening body for industry leaders, government leaders, um, um, uh, advocates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they have a big annual event at Davos every year. Um, they also operate ongoing interactions with industry players. And one of the things they're doing right now, which we're supporting, is their response to COVID-19. Um, and um, what uh, what we've we've within that they organise obviously is a series of areas um, to focus attention, including um, uh, the whole area around consumption, which includes uh, the big consumer goods companies like the, the like the Unilevers and the Nestlés and the Procter and Gambles. It includes yeah. the big retailers, so people like Walmart, um, and then obviously it includes also the big e-commerce players, so people like Amazon or JD.com or Alibaba. And so that's the, that's the group that we're mostly focused on. And so um, within that, they've asked us to look at this the evolution of how they see ecosystems uh, playing forward, um, and for two reasons. One is obviously that it is a, that it is a an opportunity for there to be much more non-competitive collaboration across the industry to help to, to do things that would actually be in the interest of society as a, as, a, as a whole. But also with things like C19, it gives them the ability to think about how can we as an industry overcome some of the cha internal challenges that we've had that have prevented us from responding to challenges like this um, to the degree to which we should. And as I was saying when we started the, the conversation, the this idea about... Um, um, uh, how, using this crisis, that this crisis has raised questions about how should we work and act differently. It's clearly accelerating those questions. So what what um, what they've asked us to do is to basically work with them on some thought leadership about where how do we see ecosystems evolving going forward, um, and where are those opportunities, um, particularly where where players have the ability to work together to achieve a higher level of public of of, uh, of, uh, of public good. Right. Oh, that's actually very interesting. My, 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 my super quick last question. Oh, again, going back to like how people perceive ecosystems, they think that typically about it's like big tech companies. Uh, which other industry do you think uh, are like on a on a on, a, on, on the frontier of uh, this ecosystem thing? I think areas where you've got it's almost a direct relationship between areas where there is a, a very rapid rate of the introduction of technology. Um, and where you've also got um, a strong interaction with consumers. So if you think about areas like health and life sciences, uh, obviously retail is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a big one. And I would say less so in areas like, you know, that have got, uh, that, are, that are more B2B driven. So utilities, um, some of the heavy manufacturing, chemicals, et cetera, you'd see some of it a little bit less. But where you have these, this ability to, you know, to very rapidly get feedback from 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 customers or from from uh, from consumers, uh, where you have the ability to to introduce new business models, which you can very rapidly test. That's where you see a lot of these sorts of potential green shoot uh, green shoot areas. So it's going to predominantly more lean um, B to C than it will be typically B to B on its uh, B to B on its uh, on its own. But if you think about, as I said, those areas where you can potentially deploy technology in a differentiated way. That's where you're particularly seeing these emerge quickly. Brilliant. Look, uh, thank you for, for sharing your insights. My last question is, uh, what what is your one piece of advice if you uh, had a chance to just give like one piece of advice to executives who, who are interested in ecosystem? What would be like a one-liner? Um, so the big thing I would say is external orientation. So if you look at the way in which uh, folks spend their time, what we see as a characteristic of those that get this is the percentage of their time that they spend during the week understanding what's happening outside the four walls of their own organization. So they are they they can tell you what the major um, uh, technology fairs are, or the major the the, um, the the major ways in which people are getting information. They can tell you uh, where you know they've had direct interaction with a lot of the smaller scale companies that are disrupting their space, etc. It's that idea of actually having um, uh, a, 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 a clear mindset to say. I have to designate three, four, five hours a week to think about 
you know, what are these things that are happening? And then to make very active decisions as to whether they're going to do something about them or ignore them. Because what we know is that the people that have basically seen some of these disruptions and, and said, oh, I, you know, I can't get to it now, or it's, you know, it's, you know, really not sure or, or that sort of thing, or treat them in a very traditional way, have been those that have very rapidly lost market share. And that's been one of the big wake up calls. So for me, the, the headline is, you know, what are you doing formally to understand the world around you as a, as a core part of the way in which you see yourself as a manager and a leader? Yeah, look, uh, I couldn't ask for more. Thank you so much for, 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 for sharing this. And uh, especially in this like, uh, time of disruption, please stay safe. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next conversation.